All right, guys, this is Joseph again from Joe Concepts. How are we doing today? I hope we're having a wonderful time in this lockdown. All right, in the previous um, week, we started a series, and it's more of a more graph. Um, so we looked at cloner, and also in the last video, we looked at random effector. Remember I said effectors are, are more forces that we can use to modify um, what cloner gives us. So in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at something like this. So you can see the effects you have here. You're having a transition from one object or from one logo to another logo and then to another logo. So that is what we're going to be looking at today. So for us to achieve this kind of a thing, we're going to be making use of three different effectors. And the first one here is going to be push your part effector. The next one is going to be inherence effector. And the last one is going to be delay effector. So that is what this tutorial is going to be about. Those three effectors, how you can use them and what they are used for. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so... The first thing you're going to do is to create an object that you're going to clone on a particular object. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to create a spherical object and then I'm going to scale this down, just reduce this. Then what I can do is to make this it just for speed purpose. So in your own case, you can make it larger than that or the subdivision to be more than this. Let's go with 12. All right, so we have this. So you need to know, or you need to have a design up here. So let's say, for instance, you want to um, create a clone and change from one object to the other. So in this case, I'm going to be picking these two objects. So let's say I'm going to pick this um, pyramid and also, let's say this all top. So Let's assume my first object is going to be the all tank. So I'm going to make this one. And the pyramid is going to be the second object to transit into. Then this is the clone object. So I'm going to create a MoGraph cloner and put this sphere as a child of that MoGraph cloner. So as soon as I do that, I'm going to hide these two guys because I won't be needing them. So the first object to have this um, clone on is going to be this pyramid. So I'm going to let this change to objects. If you remember this in my cloner tutorial. So I'm just going to drag this over to this place. So I'm going to have this object. Then my scene will start slowing down. All right. So you know that's where this render instance comes in handy. Then it brings this back. But in my case, I don't want the distribution to be on the vertex, so I'm going to change it from this to either surface or volume. So if I make it surface or volume, I'm going to reduce this count, so I'm just going to increase 2,000 count. So this is um, volume. I found that volume, uh, when I'm simulating for volume, it's a lot slower than when you do for surface. Surface is more faster, but then if you notice for volume, the distribution is a lot um, realistic. You don't get to have too much of this um, intersection as um, when you when you check at surface, you have so many intersections and all that, and this doesn't really portray this whole thing well. It doesn't make sense. So what I'm going for is I don't want to have a dynamic simulation but i want to create the illusion that these objects are not interacting they are not intersecting so what i'm going to be using for that is that is the purpose of this tutorial we're going to be looking at two new um if, uh, effectors which is the purpose of this tutorial so we've looked at random effectors so the first effector i'm going to look at here is going to be push apart so what push apart does basically is going to push you can already see what's happening it's going to push all the cloned objects apart and this is the more like the strength so and the value it makes use is the radius value here so if i bring the radius value down to 10 to 10 thereabouts so that means going to push all these objects apart 10 centimeter they're going to be 10 centimeter apart so you will the likely you will 
tend to have less um, interaction or intersection between these two objects. So you can decide to bring this down a little bit. So, so that means five is not good. There are still intersections in this one. If I bring this to eight, or I should be able to go away with seven. So this is still better. You can see that. So that is how I can simulate this. So if I go back to this, so notice I'm in surface. If I go back to volume, I have that. So because of, because of speed purpose, I'm going to go to surface. Then if you look at this push apart, you also have other things. You have your iteration. It's just more like um, how the push apart effect is going to work on this cloner object. If I make this one, you notice that the effect is not that accurate, you are still having intersection. So the higher the value, the more accurate and the more um, accurate the result is going to be. So if I go 20, you notice that it pushes these guys more apart than this. So I'm going to go with 10. 10 is okay for me. Then you have different modes. So you have hide, you can hide objects. So what hide does is that anything that is intersecting should be hidden. All right, so when you have any clone intersecting, they should be hidden. So if I start reducing this, in this case now, notice these guys, they are going to um, disappear. By the time I start reducing this value, you notice that. So as I reduce this, it knows that this will push in more and it hides that. So if you do this again, and I have that, or oh, am I sure that is it? Oh, sorry. So what the radius is more like the smallest radius. So you know. So what this is saying is that um, you can still work with this value. Anything less than one should be hidden. So, so I'm sorry about that. So if I say ten now, same any object that are, that the distance is less than ten centimeters should be hidden. So that means from this center point to the center point should be 10 centimeter. Anything less than that should be hidden. So you get that. So if I make this seven, what that means is that anything less than, so the calculation is going to be based off of from the center point to the center point. All right. So that is what that does. So if I make this 7.5, you notice that the likelihood for you to have that intersection is going to be reduced. Okay. So that's what height does. Then you also have scale apart, so scale it scales them apart. Some are small and some are so what this would do is that it still makes use of this value. So any object that are um, kind of less than this value, any two entities that are less than this value should scale either of them apart so that they don't intersect. So that's what the scale apart does. So in my case, I'm going to leave it as push apart. And I like that. So I, I like using separate effects for scaling of this object. So once I have this, the next thing I'm going to do is to select my cloner, use my random effector. So you remember random effector will randomize the position by default. So I don't want to do that. What I want is the scale. So I'm going to make a scale 0 0.2 or 3 just to randomize the scale of the object. So you see some smaller one, bigger one, and all that. So once you are done with that, that is basically what um, push apart does. Then you have the deformer and your follow off. So you know what to follow off, how the follow off works. So, so now there comes the main thing now, which is the inheritance. So what the inheritance does is it does what will transfer the clone from one object to the other object. So if you click on inheritance, so make sure you have your cloner selected, click on inheritance, nothing happens. The reason is because it's looking for an object to transfer this object or this cloned object over to. So you remember we said we want to move from um, this oil tank to pyramid. And while testing this, I noticed that if I drag this over to this place, nothing happens. It doesn't change the shape. And the reason being that I don't know it just only shift this guy to the position of the pyramid. So if the pyramid was here, you notice that 
Let's move to shift their position to that place. If I clear, it's back to the initial order. tag. So if I bring them on, so this is where the oil tank is, and this is where the pyramid is. So if I drag the pyramid over to this object tab, it shifts to that place, but it's still not having that shape of this pyramid. So how did I get through that problem in my own case? So what I did was to duplicate this cloner object. So maybe I should try what I should have tried before doing that. So if it works, then you don't, there's no need going through that process. So if I select this, I think if I convert this and let's see if it works, make it editable, still doesn't work. Okay, so I'm taking this back. So what I, my way to this about this was that I cloned this guy. So I'll make this cloner one, drag this and make this cloner two. So you know that this guy is going to be cloning onto these two objects. So if I click here, drag two over to this place. So you have this. So you have two objects. So now the reason why you have this is not for the visibility. You don't really need it visible. All right. You don't need it being visible. That's the first thing. The second thing is that you also do not need these effectors. All right. So I'm going to delete all these effectors because you only need these effectors on the first one, really. Then it affects and goes over to the other one. So once you're done with that, the next thing you're going to do is come to your inheritance and drag your cloner two over to this. As soon as you do that, nothing happens. And the reason is that okay, this cloner is here, so it should be somewhere. So we don't really need to look at position yet. So notice as we do this and drag this over, we still have the same problem, but there is now one icon that is now open for us and this is what will do the magic so if you click on this notice what happens so it transfers and gets through to this all right so if you now feel that okay um this cloner you are not having that push apart effect and the randomness then maybe you can just bring the push apart and also the random effects but we don't really need this inheritance okay so now if you look at the inheritance and you now have your strength value so from here to here so this is what you're going to be animating so we can say from here to this place we'll make this zero and bring this over to 30 if i so wish 100 scale that um put the keyframe so I'll, maybe say i'll make this 40 so if I play this now, notice the transition. All right, so you can see the transition from there to there. So if you want the position to be same place, all you just need to do is drag this clone and move it in the same position. And that is what you get. But if you notice, this is, it looks so, um, so dry, the animation is dry. So what I can do is to, bring the life to this animation is to use another effector. I didn't plan talking about this, but let's just look at this. So we know that we talked about three effectors. So you want to add your delay. So if I, if you add your delay effector, so you need to add the delay effector to the first object. If I drag this over to this. Now the delay effector has three different, three major modes. So you have your even blend and spring. So let's look at the even. So you notice it doesn't have anything. It just has a vector, parameter, depend. and for the parameter, I can decide to get rid of some things. Maybe I don't want the position, the position, I don't want the rotation, I don't want scale. Or maybe the only thing I need is this effector, this delay to have effect on only the position. I don't want to have an effect on this one. I have everything. So this is pretty much the uh, same thing with all the factors. So if you go to this, Effector mode, you already know the strength. Okay, so let's bring this back to 50. You have your mode. So I said we have three modes. So let's look at the even mode. So if you play, so let's see. This is um, instance, and this is instance. And another thing, sorry, before that, notice if you want to keep the same number of counts, so it's just okay for you. It is advisable for you to make sure that the number of counts you have for the first clone. 
is the same thing you have for the second one. But in my ex in my example, what I did was I animated this count because I noticed that the number of counts for one shape to the other shape wasn't really um, the same. What I mean is that the particular number of count for a shape is not enough for the other shape. So what I did was to animate and increase the count for the next shape for me to um, compensate for the shape um, coming up. So you, but to start with, you want to have this same number of counts and see if you have a more definition, shape, more defined shape. And if not, you can start increasing. All right, so if you look at the delay and I play this, I have even. So the even is more like the default, what we've had before. So you notice it just goes and evens all things out. So let me just, for speed purpose, let's bring this 1000. So it's going to be faster. So you see what even does. Okay. It just goes just more like without the blend. So when you don't have delay and you add delay and make it even, it's still the same effect you get to have. All right. It's just the difference that you can start adding fall off to this. So the other option you have is blend. So what blend does is it blends the first shape to the other and you have that. So you can see the effect of this blend more when you have the first object somewhere here. Okay, so I think this shape should come here. Okay. So you can see the blending between that. Then what I use in my own case is spring. So you have that spring effect. So you notice it goes, springs up a little bit. So let's just bring this over here. So the effect of this Spring can be changed in the strength. So if I make this strength 80 or 100, so let's try 80. So you notice the effect you get to have. Springs even more. So let's make this 100. So we have to start. Okay, sorry. I think 100 doesn't work it, so let's try 95 and play. Okay, so you see that. So I think that is too much. So let's try 75. So you see it bounces in, and that is what the spring does. So that is how I did that. So what I, the bonus I'm going to give you guys is, if you want to add a follow-up to this effect, then you can go to this... Um, inheritance and go to your follow-off and change your follow-off to anything so let's try linear and then increase it so what linear would do is if i play now notice what happens if i bring this linear here it starts and if i move it over to this place you will not have the effect until you start moving this position this linear effect so let's animate the linear effect and let's bring this over up here and rotate. So let's say at this position, I'm going to keyframe that. And at this position here, somewhere here, I'm going to move this to this place and keyframe that. So if we play, notice that the effect starts coming up from here and go so you can see so it just more like it's it gets sucked in into the next shape and you don't just have so you can see that effect and coupled with the delay and all that you get out of the shape so i think this ends this tutorial and how you can make use of the delay factor inheritance and push your path so if you feel this was helpful please do give me a like and it sounds up because it helps me in the YouTube algorithm. You can also share because you don't know who might need this. And also, if you're new to this channel, please do subscribe to my channel because I do tutorials like this every time. You do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.